Well, I really should be still fishing today. It's late January, but we're gonna do some trout fishing instead. It's pretty mild, um, it's pretty nice. When I turned the truck off, it was about six degrees Celsius, so that's pretty tolerable. I'm still gonna be putting on my winter outerwear here, simply because I get cold pretty easily. But we're gonna be fishing at one of the stock lakes out here in the Fraser Valley. Um, these lakes are stocked by the Freshwater Fishes Society of BC. Um, several hundred rainbow trout are released every year into uh, these lakes in the spring as well as the fall. And there's this um, assumption that the fishing is not very good throughout the winter time because the lakes are usually fished out by the time uh, a couple months after they have been stocked. But that's not really true, especially out here in the Fraser Valley, um, at these lakes that are not fished as much as the urban lakes. So on a pretty relatively warm day like this you can come out here and uh, catch some fish but I shouldn't say that too soon though because I actually haven't fished yet so I don't actually know if there are fish here um, so we're gonna go down and give it a go and uh, I'm going to be showing you some of my techniques uh, that I use to catch rainbow trout in the winter time let's go putting my Banford uh, spinning reel on there, which is a bit of an overkill, but I like this reel so much, I'm gonna use it. I love to float fish for rainbow trout. I find that to be a very effective way of fishing for them, but I'm gonna try something a little different today. I'm gonna use a bottom-up setup. Six pound test with cigar fluorocarbon is what we're gonna be using for leader. Uh, maybe three to four feet. On my main line, I have a sliding weight that's roughly around a quarter pound, uh, a quarter pound, a quarter ounce um, on it, and then followed by a bead. This bead is kind of like a separation between the weight and the swivel to protect the swivel. If you don't have to bead over there and this weight keeps hitting that swivel, eventually the line would be damaged and the swivel would be damaged as well. And following my swivel is my fluorocarbon leader. I'm going to be using these on the uh, size 6 SSW hooks. We'll do a bait loop knot even though we're not we're not using the bait loop um, I just find that the bait loop knot is a lot stronger than the uh, improved clinch knot and that is it that is the setup so we got your uh, quarter ounce sliding weight uh, followed by the bead the swivel and then we got the leader followed by the hook and for bait we're going to be using these um, Parsky bait, fire bait, which is just a um, artificial paste that you can put on the hook. So you just roll that into a, like Play-Doh, roll into a dough ball and just cover the hook up. Ideally you want to show, uh, it's hard to, hard, hard to find it, show the point of the hook a little bit just for easy hookup. But yeah, so that will stay on the hook pretty well. And this is actually, it has a pretty light density. So you actually float in the water. So when that weight is sitting on the bottom, this leader will actually float up. So the bait will actually suspend a few feet off the bottom. And where the, that's where the strike zone is. That's where the trout will be feeding. So we're gonna try casting as far as we can. And uh, because it's in the middle of winter, it's a little colder. So assuming the fish are going to be a lot further out, a lot deeper, in a lot deeper water. And around the bottom too, that's why we're using a bottom rig instead of a floating rig. And just let it sink to the bottom. Yeah, now it's on the bottom. With the bottom set up, you want to keep that line relatively tight so when the fish bite you can actually see the bites on your rod tip you 
definitely want to keep your eyes on the rod because the fish might pull it in. You just never know. It's so nice out. Nobody around and yeah, just peaceful. Should have brought a chair. <laughs> Why didn't think of that? I have chairs at home. I, didn't, I should have brought a chair. I think I'm actually going to recast because I cast out that way and there's a pretty big log submerged right here. And I feel like I'm going to snack up on that. What I should have done was I should have cast out that way, kind of away from that log over there. This fish just jumped. That's a good sign, right? I have had any bites for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Even though I mentioned that the bottom fishing can be a good method, my preference is actually flow fishing. Um, I'm never really that confident when it comes to bottom fishing. I've had good days with it, but just but I've also had bad days with it. Okay, I'm gonna try some chartreuse instead of pink. This is the color that has always worked really well for me. Let's try that. Bite, bite, bite. Finally, a bite. Oh. I was just about to change. Grab the, oh, there it is, there it is. Okay. <laughs> what the, it's been like an hour and I was just about to switch up a little bit, change bait and uh, change, well, change to a different technique. But then I get a really big bite. And now I think I lost my bait. Oh, there it is, there it is. it's still there. <laughs> oh, just grab the camera and I'm about to just tell you guys that I'm gonna change up the technique um, let me switch up to a different rig and change the bait. I brought some shrimp as well that I was going to try because I was losing faith um, on this fire bait here. It's been like an hour, like I said, nothing. And finally, bam. What do I do now? Do I, do I change up or do I just stick into this? Maybe the bite's coming on. It's a funny thing about fishing, isn't it? You know, you, you wait and you wait and you wait and you don't get any bites and just about to give up. And then the fish thought, well, let's give it, you know, let's give it a chance and a bit. And that's when you're going to stick around for a little bit longer. Um, I think I am going to stick to this technique a little bit longer. Uh, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon. I got a few hours left, so I can still wait a little bit before I switch up to a different technique. I really want to catch one on the bottom rig. Um, this is such an elementary style of fishing, yet I seem to have a problem with it a lot of times. So, you know, I'm going to spend a bit more time trying to fine tune that today. So I'm going to tie up a three-way um, rig. So basically I'm going to have a fixed weight on the bottom with a leader um, a couple feet up from the weight just a very short leader and and then um that's where the hook's gonna be okay so this new rig i've got the swivel i'm gonna attach the main line to here followed by a very short leader to the hook roughly around a foot long 
and then I gotta really long lead it down to the weight. So the idea is to put some shrimp on this hook right here and that weight's gonna be anchoring around the bottom and this shrimp would be suspended by this you know a little further up away from the bottom because the shrimp doesn't float so this is kind of like the rig I want to use um, it's the only way to kind of keep that bait off the bottom I'm gonna give this <laughs> give this fire bait a little longer a little more chance time to set up the other rod Every time I go away, start doing something else. Come on. Well, the bait does work. It's just, I'm not getting bites frequent enough to keep me interested. It's, this rod is a little longer. Normally I use it for flow fishing. So I'm gonna set up another bottom rig with this. I feel like I haven't really had a good chance on hooking them. Normally shrimp works pretty well, so if this doesn't work, then we're gonna have a problem. Yeah, like that. But yeah, I'm pretty confident with um, the shrimp. Almost never fails, except maybe today. That's a good bite. That's a good bite. Base still there. <laughs> it bit once and then that was it. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, there's a fish, there's a fish, there's a fish. That's a fish. <laughs> that feels pretty good too. Oh, when they're coming up from that deep, it's heavy. <laughs> I gotta watch that branch over there. Oh gosh. There it is. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that took a while to get, eh? <laughs> nice little Fraser Valley. Um, so this fish was probably released into this lake last spring. Um, it's pretty fat. Pretty nice fish. Yeah, decent size, eh? We're gonna let it go, though. I don't need to keep this fish. Off he goes. I feel good. I feel just as good as catching a steelhead. <laughs> Let's put another shrimp palm. It works. That was fun. They, um, the fight was better than I thought. Oh, there's another bite already. There's another bite, 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 bite. Oh, there's another fish. There's another fish. Yes. Oh, another heavy one. <laughs> oh, it came off. It came off. <laughs> All right. There we go. Hmm. 
maybe now the bites will be more frequent because they found the bait. Bye, 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 bye. Oh, there's another one. Oh, heavy, heavy fish. Heavy. Another one. Yeah. This one looks pretty nice too. The thing's pretty nice. Usually these fish, when released, the thing's not very nice, but uh, look, they're kind of grown back and uh, pretty looking fish. Off it goes. Not bad, not bad at all. It's really important to keep that line tight. See, I'm constantly adjusting. That line can go. Oh, there's a bite. There's, there's a fish. There's a fish. <laughs> okay, what I was saying is it's really important to keep that line tight because if you want to see the bites, the line's got to be tight. There it is. Went all the way over there. Come over here. What is that? Fish number three landed? Yeah, that's another, that's not a really pretty one. Look at it. Spotty. It's got all this thing, it's pretty intact. And uh, yeah, nice fish. Ooh. These shrimp, I didn't really do anything to them. Um, they're, they're just cocktail shrimps. I put lots of salt in them and dried them out a little bit. Not too dry, just until they're quite firm. And yeah, and they work. I knew we were gonna get bites. Oh, another bite right there. There's another bite. Um, I started out, oh, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a, bite. There's a fish, there's a fish. Oh, oh there's, there's one, there's one. Down it. I tried to do the outro, then I lost another one. Oh well, they're still fighting. Well, that definitely worked out better than I had expected. I knew it was gonna be challenging, but um, I thought I would get a few bites at least. Um, we started out um, struggling a little bit. You know, I was having a hard time figuring out the depth, where I should cast and what kind of bait I should use and what kind of rig I should use. But after playing around with it a little bit, I finally got some bites and uh, yeah, that was pretty good. We ended up with um, over half a dozen bites and uh, I had five fish on and landed three. And these fish, the quality of these fish were just fantastic. Um, the, the things are intact. It's not like the newly stocked fish. And uh, you know what? And best of all, look at this. There's absolutely no one around and it's been just really peaceful to be out here by myself in the middle of January. Yeah, spoiled. But yeah, if you um, want to do some winter trout fishing, you know, there are lots of opportunities. There are over a dozen lakes around the lower mainland and Fraser Valley where um, the Freshwater Fish Society BC uh, release fish into them. Uh, even though stockings haven't happened since September, um, there are definitely some hungry fish around as you can see. And the fishing pressure is very low, so get out there and enjoy it. Um, if you have any other questions regarding uh, what I did today, make sure to leave a comment on the bottom. I'm always happy to answer them. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching. And until next time, good luck fishing.